Hello, my name is John, and this is my channel where I talk about books, writing, and stuff. Stories can be a form of entertainment, a medium for artistic expression, a creative way of exploring various experiences, but they may also serve as a means of catharsis for both the author and the reader. Although these two roles represent the reverse and obverse of the same coin, let it be known that it's far more difficult to create a compelling story than it is to write a quality review. As the old saying goes, if it was easy, then everyone would do it, which is why everybody is considered a critic and only a fraction double as published authors. Now you don't have to be an author in order to write a book review, but understanding basic story structure and narrative framework may elevate your reading comprehension. People may think criticism is all subjective, but there's more to reading than simply sharing opinions and feelings. My 2022 presentation on Storycraft breaks down all the elements that create a complete story, and the significance of this will become more apparent as we go. Because in this video, I want to take a critical look at book reviews and also share with you how I go about evaluating fictional literature. A book review is a form of literary criticism in which a book is merely described, like in a summary review, or analyzed based on content, style, and merit. I will say that technically a summary is a type of review, but it's not really a form of criticism. A summary review is more akin to a book report in the sense that a summary review has more to do with specifically gauging one's reading comprehension and their ability to recall information than it does drawing conclusions or making value judgments. I will be focusing on the various forms of written reviews, but there are several ways in which individuals can produce video reviews as well. A couple examples are individually produced video essays or group discussions. These methods of reviewing reading material can be quite in-depth and engaging. Of course, group discussions can also take place in text-based forums and chat rooms, but a video production or live hosted event makes for a more organized presentation. Of course, that also depends on how much boxed wine is involved. Written reviews come in different formats as well. For the most part, written reviews typically fall into three different categories. Short form reviews, editorials, and in-depth analysis. The distinguishing factor that makes these three formats distinct isn't simply the length of the review or even the content itself, but their application. Most people will say that reviews are written solely for readers or to inform potential customers. And in our fast-paced, hyper-commercialized lives, it's no surprise that consumerism has left an impact upon our perception in this regard. Reviews are not only for readers and customers, but as I alluded to before, with all the various formats mentioned, reviews can also be for the authors themselves, for instance, when their manuscripts are still in development but reviews can also be for the benefit of students within an academic setting. Lest we forget that reading can just be enjoyed 
as a personal pastime and that keeping a journal is a way for an individual to document their personal experience with all the books they've read throughout the course of their life. Those physical journals are not necessarily written for anyone else in particular but more or less becomes their own body of work that symbolize a reader's history which can be revisited and treasured by the individual or by their descendants for generations to come. Now, with the advent of the internet and blogging, it's easy to do it all digital and kill two birds with one stone in that sense, but the hobby of journaling can become an art form in its own right. Think of scrapbooking, but you're crafting pages after each reviewed book and giving them their own distinct look like a handcrafted treasure as well as a documented account of one's experience with reading. So there are many reasons why you may write reviews and the reasoning could be as straightforward as an assignment, as simple as the application, or as complex and as sentimental as your personal perception. I feel like sometimes people only see reviews from the eyes of a consumer which, in my opinion, takes all the flavor out of it, especially since we've been conditioned to digest endless commercials and advertisements plastered with one-liner quotes, sometimes accompanied by five-star ratings, from people who are just being used to validate the product or suggest its merit. Art is subjective, and since literature is considered an art form, then it's only natural that opinions will vary based upon each individual reading experience. Since the experience is subjective, then that explains why two different people reading the same book can end up giving it two different reviews. However, one man's five-star review could be another man's two. If opinions are like assholes, and you could bet your ass that every asshole's got something to say. But the ancient Greek philosopher Plato once said, Opinion is the medium between knowledge and ignorance, which implies that each opinion falls somewhere on a broad spectrum of values. That is, if they aren't haphazardly falling upon deaf ears. Sometimes difference of opinion goes beyond mere personal preference, and critiquing a work of fiction is one of those instances where an individual's reading comprehension level makes all the difference when it comes to writing a quality review. There are multiple ways in which reviewers may break down a piece of fiction. Short form reviews usually jump right into the reader experience with opinionated statements about one thing or another. A more structured review will typically include a short summary or synopsis of the story itself before diving into the various categories that the critic wants to analyze. If I'm feeling extra creative, sometimes I'll try writing an original blurb in my own words, but if not, then I always make sure to give a brief overview. For my Indie Breakdown series, I concentrate on writing editorials that are focused on the elements that I thought were the most relevant to the specific story that I'm critiquing. My aim is to provide entertainment, intrigue, and analysis. I try to write each editorial in a way that will provide additional insight for those who read the book, but in such a way that will only make sense to those who read the book. This isn't to say that my editorials are spoiler free, but just that much of the material is taken out of context. I'm not doing a full analysis. The elements that I analyze may vary from one book to the next depending upon the format. For example, I don't critique short story collections the same way I do novels, so what I decided to do was come up with three distinct but extensive categories in which I could break down any work of fiction, regardless of format, and still cover all the book's relevant elements.
I think the most significant aspect of any work of fiction is readability. Readability is really just a catch-all term that pertains to a book's clarity, and clarity has the greatest impact upon the reading experience. When judging clarity, I look at things like narrative structure, plot beats, pacing, character threads, but I also pay attention to the book's formatting as well as the actual writing itself. With experience comes the ability to distinguish the difference between noticing discrepancies or logical errors that may negatively impact a book's clarity and just obsessively nitpicking a piece of work for otherwise insignificant syntax, grammar, or spelling mistakes. Now if you notice that the name of a character has changed without warning or explicit reason, then you've probably stumbled across a critical error. This category is all about highlighting any examples of the author's imagination, or lack thereof. I could be examining the prose for any standout imagery, or be on the lookout for any symbolism, metaphor, or any other creative writing techniques utilized by the author, regardless if it was done well or not. However, I'll also watch out for abstract concepts within the story like magic systems or world building details, but I may also pick apart specific details such as quotes. I try not to conflate creativity with originality because something can be wholly original but show rotten imagination whereas an age-old concept could be reimagined with enough creativity and still come across as fresh. Usually when people pick up a book, the first thing they want to do is check out the blurb. Reading a book's blurb or synopsis may create expectations or perhaps even some preconceived notions about the story. Whether or not a book delivers upon those expectations will be based upon the execution of various elements within the actual narrative. I may highlight key events that take place throughout the plot. I may focus on character development. I may even speculate upon the meaning, the message, or the authorial intent of the work itself. But this is also a chance for me to really reflect upon my personal experience with the story. Before finishing my review, I'll evaluate the three categories and tally up an overall score based on my own 10 point scale. I know that ratings can be quite divisive, but honestly, if you're going to be taken seriously as a critic, then you should probably get used to giving the literature you read a score, if for no other reason but to document your personal reading experience. It just makes sense logistically to apply an overall rating to a book so that you can easily search through your reading history for a particular experience. Each reader may have their own rating system, which also becomes a staple of that particular critic's reputation. If someone is always dishing out five stars, then what does that mean exactly? Some people may say that just means that a book was the best that it could possibly be, whatever that means. Now I can't speak for others, but I can use reason to explain my own method and then you can tell me if it makes sense or not. So every category has a max score based on a 10 point scale. A score is applied for each category based on the elements of the story that I concentrated on which provides a standard score, because the score is based on my level of reading comprehension and not just my personal experience with the book. 
In other words, I'm not going to give a low score to a romance novel just because I am not personally interested by the genre. The points are applied to the elements within the story that I'm choosing to recognize, which may have nothing to do with my personal feelings and may be focused on the author's writing skill or acknowledging their expertise within the craft. Of course, it is impossible to be completely unbiased when sharing opinions, which is why I try my best to focus on the elements of the work and not my feelings. But it's important to note that even with that in mind, the standard is still based upon my personal level of reading comprehension and how deeply I understand the various aspects of fiction, genre, nuance, and perhaps even trivia knowledge. So all in all, the rating I give a book is still a reflection of my experience, regardless of how objective the measure. But I also consider ratings to be more of a reflection of a critic's reputation than they are of the book's quality. At the end of the day, our opinions only matter if someone values them. But if people are being honest, then they should also have good reason to value someone's opinion. And on that note, I hope you found this presentation on critical reviews to be helpful. Cheers. Now hold up just a minute. There's one more thing that needs to be done, and that's for you to choose your destiny. That's right. On your left, you will see the Rebel deck. On your right, you will see the Mythic deck. Choose your path and accept your fate.